Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. It's the Soul Family Read. This is for the Tuesday, the 12th of October. Wow. <laughs> um, kind of thinking of this as a run-of-the-mill day here. Um, do the four-card uh, spread. A um, lot of things on my mind. So many dreams last night. Uh, I woke up, of all things, with Black Moon Lilith on my mind. Um, and, and why is in my natal chart, and if you don't know, it's uh, Black Moon Lilith is a mathematical position. Uh, Tom Jacobs, I'll put a link below and I'll let him explain it. He literally wrote the book. Um, I just found it to be one of the things that's powerfully significant, not just for myself, but I, I don't know how many charts I've done. Got to be a thousand. And um, I've always, I looked, got caught onto it early. And I look at along with arrows. Arrows, by the way, for me, um, it's at four degrees Sagittarius in transit. And that's an asteroid. You can Google that or YouTube. Uh, has to do with the body, I'm realizing. It has to do with the sexuality. But it has to do with the body. It figured big in this big attack that almost killed me in 2008. I've really looked at that chart uh, up and down. Um, when I started doing charts uh, back in 2017 and started looking at transit, only myself for a whole year and look at anybody else only myself on my chart and learning astrology uh, and I had to go back to that date that profound date that paralyzed me completely and this trauma that, that changed my life um, kind of for the better in an odd way um, isn't that funny but you know I had to look at it and boy you know Black Moon Lilith by transit and uh, was uh, really strong so that's kind of on my mind, and it, for me it's about the body. Um, like I was telling my girlfriend, it's like, really made me realize this sickness, I've been really sick like yesterday, and that's a sinus infection, and I've gotten it a long time, all my life. And why am I so out of touch with my body? Um, I hurt myself, it's, I've done nothing but hurt myself in the last like four months. It's physically been uh, terrible. Uh, not real bad stuff, though. At Geron in the sixth house for me, constantly little nagging problems. Usually not the life and death variety, but, but it, it takes a toll, you know. Um, but it's like, why, uh, why do I get this? What, I know when I get to allergies and the sciences start acting up. I know I got, if I can't get it under control in two, three weeks, particularly in the tropics. I'm in Mexico um, where there's more bugs, you know, more virus and bacteria, particularly bacteria, um, you know, I'm going to get a sinus infection. And the doctors here told me that. And when I was in Louisiana, they told me that. I said, Dave, down here, particularly, he said, you know, you're, you're going to get sinus infection. And I know when I do. And I just let it get to the point where it gets really bad. Like, I'm sick. I'm th I feel like I'm dying. Uh, and luckily, you know, I have the antibiotics to treat it. My old point is, I just have to be aware of my own body, and I'm just not. Now, not everybody's like this. I would suggest that, particularly if you're Mars, but along with your arrows, and this black moon Lilith, these are the body, and also sexual. I mean, if you're interested in sexuality and all of that, those are the three go-tos. My point is, particularly black moon Lilith, and Tom Jacobs goes into this very well, you know, it's not just about... A, female expression of uh, overt sexuality. It is, but that's not all. It's like the id is what Black Moon Lilith is. And, then, and so now it's like my mind has to come in. And I'm really making a commitment. Damn it, you know, I'm going to be more aware of my body and take care of it. And it came to mind years ago that our body is our inner child. And I realized after my attack in 2008, you know, it wasn't my fault. This is all me attack. Get that. But uh, it was more of kind of dealing with my relationship then. After 21 years of marriage, attack happened. I went completely paralyzed on our anniversary. So go figure, right? Um, talk about like a message. Um, you know, so the point is uh, just trying to be more aware of myself and my body and, um, and that kind of thing. Um, and that's kind of what I'll think of in terms of this reading today as we pull four cards. Um, you know, how are we doing with the mind-body connection? Gabor Mate, When the Body Says No, was a huge book for me about the mind-body connection. 
and it kind of made it real. And that was when I had that attack and I was recovering. I was trying to figure out, it's like, it's like I got hit by a truck and I never got the license number. And you know, I had to figure out the diagnosis. They were telling me you'd be dead within a year. Another lesson, don't necessarily listen to doctors. <laughs> uh, definitely get a second opinion for anything seriously, please. I'm telling you for your own you know, love of yourself. Um, don't lay down because they tell you no, particularly if it's anything serious. But, um, so that's the theme. I'm just trying to get this reading out and then try to get the four readings out. I was ahead a day, but now <laughs> I'm back to on schedule. Um, so thank you guys. And let's just do this. We're going to start with the Nine of Swords. So the Nine of Swords, I swear to God, a hawk just flew over as so I pulled that up. I looked up, up but that's a hawk. <laughs> and uh, that's our energy right now where we're at definitely where I'm at <laughs> you know look at that what are all we just talking about this nine swords you know so right now see Jupiter's on my care on and the soul wounds I'm, I'm, I'm more in the mind now moving forward what I'm mostly what am I interested in I'm craving to understand it's the astrology tarot I gotta say is second to me but I don't know I love tarot but it, Tarot's like a, more of a hobby, and astrology's uh, like my work, how I see it. Um, so, but I am going back, you know, and thinking about these things, particularly this mind-body connection, and how it's affected me my whole life. And look, I got, uh, my black moon Lilith is exactly opposite my sun. It's uh, 2516 and 2527, so that's 11 minutes difference. You know, and the black moon Lilith doesn't move real fast, you know. And the oscillating one, whole point goes back and forth, back and forth. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the energy of this animal energy. Black moon Lilith, that energy of like, you know, you're an animal. Somebody comes in a room, the hair stands up on the back of your neck. Or you get a really good feeling. Or someone, you know, you just are around them and they make your panties wet. And there's no explanation. It's way below the level of words and thoughts even. You know, but this is like going back and revisiting these things. Um, you know, look how the, I think you can see here, the ghosts. They're in the mind, haunting the mind, you know. I'm about at the point where I don't even mind this. It's like, uh, okay, uh, what are you going to tell me? It's like when I have a thought that I don't understand or a feeling I don't understand, I notice it and say to the feeling, I'm crazy. I talk to myself all the time. And I'm like, I see you there feeling, and I get it that you're part of me feeling, and you're trying to help me. And so, you know, thank you for that. That's all I do. So I validate the feeling, and I recognize the feeling, and then I thank the feeling. And lo and behold, within a, a few minutes to a few hours, sometimes a few days, it's sort of, that's all I do. And it, whatever that is within myself kind of comes clear. And I don't know, maybe it's simple. Maybe everybody else is more in touch with themselves. But um, swords, too, are always mercury, always the mind. And so for me, it's it's been quite a process just to get a piece of my own mind and um, control of my own thoughts. Not even control, just uh, integration. Integration. Mercury on the IC, square Pluto, that kind of thing. All of that's coming in there for me. Now, and what's the block? What's the challenge? Five of Cups energy. So as you point out here, you can see in the way in the background, you can see that good enough. There's the castle. So these come a long way. And these are cups. These are motions in, in isolation. That's why I call this the soul tribe. You know, um, it hit me the other day. Like, I don't have to do this alone, you know. I don't, and by that, I didn't, I mean, I don't have to be alone. I don't have to have this life alone. So much of my life, it's been so difficult to relate to people and being like an empath and not having control of it most of my life. Um, drawing in always the people that needed help and Sagittarius, strong energy is what? Mutable fire. What does that do? Shh, constantly, shh, constantly pull. Anybody that's Sagittarius, mutable fire, recognize you are constantly pouring forth energy into everything and the people around you. And, you know, uh, it's the energy that gives 
you don't even know you're giving, but people will know. They'll say like, you know, you, you give me a lot, and you'll be like, I'm not giving you anything, you know, but it's just they appreciate the energy pouring off. So this is in the blocking, this is being like emotionally withdrawn. I mean, look, how could you be more emotionally withdrawn in that picture? If you just read intuitively, this is a deck, the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot. If I was going to teach a course, and I'd say, look, if you just don't want to learn a card, I don't care. Get this deck and, you know, roll with it. How does it make you feel? You know, I advise that you do, though. <laughs> it tarot's amazing. Uh, tarot of the Bohemian. You go and get that book. It's a, somebody republished it. It's written in 1892. It's the key to the esoteric kingdom, okay? Um... Wow, so that's what this is about, you know, trying to emotionally come out of this feeling. Five is that being stuck, grinding in yourself, five of swords, negative energy, negative emotional feelings, you know. Sure, that's holding us back. The high priestess, <laughs> this is our advice from spirit. Um, I remember a time I hadn't seen the high priestess in a while. This is trusting our intuition. I'm there, baby. I'm there. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine not long ago. And he's a scientist, basically. And he said, so let me get this straight. You literally are just saying out loud that you base your entire life and you make your decisions upon, you know, these esoteric things and mostly upon this literal hallucinogenic experience you had with mushrooms. That's how you form your view of the universe. I'm like, yep. And um, he's like, okay. So that's what that is. It's saying do that. In some fashion, do that. Look at the high priestess. I mean, it's kind of invulnerable. Who advises the emperor? Who advises the empress? The high priestess. So who's the most powerful one? I think the high priestess is. You know, we talk about, oh, the emperor is the most powerful one in the deck. Well, maybe the sun. Without the sun, there's nothing. But in terms of the uh, major kana that represent, in some way, can represent people. This is the high priestess energy. But that's just the higher self. You know, you talk about the five of cups. Uh, all the energies on, on the spectrum, one to ten, low to high vibrational. You could see the high priestess as watery energy. So what do you have here? Five of cups, what's blocking us? The lowest vibrational emotional energy. Fear, doubt, self-sabotage, uh, Bitter and all the terrible emotional things that are low vibrational. You know, I like to think I'm above it, but it's emotions. We'll have control over it. You know, again, the body. We want to talk about Black Moon Lilith. We want to talk about Eros, Asteroid. We want to talk about Mars. These are things that are below the level of articulation. You, some of these things, you can't even think about them. You can't even bring them up into thought. That's what Lilith is. It's that stuff that never is going to get to the level of thought, you know, and it can be very sexual, but it can just be very, it can save your, Lilith will save your life, it's that your hair raises on the back of your neck a set, maybe a, a split second before something terrible happens, and you extricate yourself from a situation, this happens, I remember times in my life when this happened, and my Lilith is a terribly ill place, as I said, if you have a strong Lilith, you would be that person that the minute someone walks in a room, and Lilith has a little Scorpio energy comes with it. It's complicated, but it does. You know, you just pick up immediately danger, no problem, danger, no problem. And you just, it's, it's that sense, animal sense of danger, safety. Wow. And so uh, this is my only hope is in order to attach to my body and integrate these things and, and, uh, I think I know now, I don't know if I want to go into this, but I think like as a child is basically, I think in the very early months as an infant, you know, uh, my mother was following instructions, possibly from then my father and from, uh, I believe it's called Dr. Spock, is a terribly popular psychologist back then when there was no internet, people actually read books. And so, to my mother's benefit, apparently she read, you know, his books. So I think she was following his advice. So it could be about just uh, waking up in the morning wet and not being changed and etc. 
crying and not be attended to out of a thought that, well, this is going to make the baby stronger and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's a, that, that's Black Moon Lilith, you know. I believe, uh, like, I've noticed people that were molested before the age of reason. This gets in the body, and it's just impossible, I think, to get it out. I shouldn't say impossible, but I almost think the better effort of energy would be to integrate these things somehow. <clears throat> and that's all about Carol. And they say it's the soul wound, what we're born with, what we die with. So what do you do? You integrate it. You know, like you could spend all this energy trying to extinguish it, extinguish it. Or you could spend a lot less energy transforming it, and you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. Because that same energy that's so terrible in us is also very strong. So think of it like a wild animal. If you get, you know, tame it and make friends with it, then look what you have. This harmonious relationship with this powerful, wonderful, wild animal that you were going to kill. You know, because it was dangerous. So, you know, it's a huge benefit to doing all this too. Now let's see the outcome here. Page of Cups. <laughs> I really see this page of cups exactly I said this is watery energy um, so we add the uh, one cup to the five of cups and we get the six of cups and so that's not about soulmates that's about six of cups energy which is emotionally getting out of the five of cups energy that feeling of nostalgia of soulmate is a feeling of being uh, in your own body and being safe and that things are okay and emotionally uh, feeling really open, you know. Um, <coughs> six is movement. And the six of swords, wow. moving away from something, you know. Uh, six of wands, you know, all of it. So, uh, I tell you, if you take the five of cups and the page of cups, and even the page of cups in this reading, she's giving her cup to the high priestess. That's beautiful. So, this is not about another person. This is us emotionally recognizing ourselves, emotionally connecting with ourselves, through our intuition, through our higher self, the high priestess, the higher self. Hair font too. The, hair, the high priestess, I think, I like relate to more. It's the divine feminine energy of our higher self. And then look at the overall energy, which is even uh, more amazing, again, with the cups and the queen of cups. And in this deck, she's such a, such a beautiful queen. Um, and so, again, if you just intuitively how does it make you feel when you look at this queen you know and this is the overall energy of the reading so this is what we really are this is where we really are the queen of cups i feel like i'll take it queen of cups and if you look at the deck the ethereal visions illuminated tarot you have the high priestess on the front so man i'm not so crazy saying it's the most powerful card in the deck <laughs> all right thank you guys